welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. For many years, I've thought it would be really cool to have a Raspberry Pi in a Mini ITX form factor so it could be mounted in any standard PC case. And whilst Mini ITX Raspberry Pi cluster boards do now exist, I can't find any product that turns a single Raspberry Pi model into a Mini ITX board. And so I've constructed this, my very own Mini ITX Raspberry Pi. And what we have here is a Raspberry Pi 5 with Mini ITX mountings, and it's got all of its connectors on one edge, and it's got an M.2 NVMe SSD for storage. So let's go back in time, and I'll show you how this was constructed. Greetings. In this project, we're going to be using this Raspberry Pi 5, which is fitted with the official cooler. We also need a means of bringing all of the connectors on the Pi to one edge. And as some of you may recall, in a previous build, I did this using extension adapters. However, I've since discovered this very exciting. This is the WaveShare Micro HDMI to HDMI multifunction adapter. And as we can see, if we put this next to the Pi, something like that, this extends the USB-C power connector on the Pi and its two micro HDMI connectors to the same edge as the USB ports on the Ethernet port. And in the process, the micro HDMI connectors become full size HDMI connectors, which is very exciting. And we also have on the back of this adapter, this connector here, this is actually a little plug like that. And this is a five volt power connector. We've got screw terminals there. So if we want, we can power this board. We can power the Pi using this connector rather than the USB-C port. And also on this adapter board, we've got these, which are two UART connectors. These will connect to the Pi via its USB-C power connector, which also carries USB 2 connectivity. If you're wondering, the adapter is currently listed on Amazon US for $12.47 on Amazon UK for £11.99, and on the Pi Hut website for £5.90. And I do apologise if it goes out of stock on all of these sites just after this video is released. Anyway, let's plug it in. Should be straightforward like that. Keep it level and straight. There we are, that's pretty good. And just to remind us what we're trying to achieve, over here I've got a mini ITX board, the ARM Base Rock 5 ITX. And so this project is all about taking our Pi 5 and adapter and various other things and mounting them in this form factor. And we also have to bear in mind that when we use a mini ITX board or indeed any other kind of mainstream PC motherboard in a case, there's going to be an IO shield fitted in that case, something like this, which will allow all the connectors to poke through at the back of the board. But right now, I don't have a means of making something like this. And so what I'm going to do is to incorporate an end panel with connector cutouts onto a single baseboard. Now, I often build things on this channel and indeed on my other Christopher Barnett YouTube channel using ABS Sheet. And I did consider this for this project. But I thought that some of you may be interested in my design. And so here I'm going to use 3D printing so I can share printable files. Over here, I've got a piece of cardboard taken from a cereal packet. Any kind of cereal will do. And I've marked this out and cut this out to be a guide for, for this project. This is 170 by 170 millimeters, 6.7 by 6.7 inches, which is the size of a mini ITX motherboard. And we can see here where the holes will have to be so we can mount in a PC case. So if we bring in the Pi and its adapter board, it'll mount somewhere like that. And my initial plan was also to mount on the board this, which is an M.2 adapter board, which works with the Pi so we can mount an NVMe SSD. But this isn't going to work because it could be mounted like that. That was my initial plan or behind the Pi. But unfortunately, I can't find a way to get a connection between a board like this and the Pi to work because it has to connect via one of these flexible PCI ribbon connectors. These can't be that long for the thing to work. So I couldn't find a way to do it sitting beside the Pi. And if it was behind the pipe, it would actually work. That would go in quite easily, but it's too big for the form factor. So I'm not going to use this adapter board. And so rather what I've done is to purchase this, an official Raspberry Pi M.2 hat kit, 
It even contains a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD in the box. And this will mount apparently on top of the Pi and work fine with the cooler. I'll be interested to see how that works, but that's at least what's gonna happen in the project. Although it is worth noting, there will be space to mount another Pi hat on the board, which could connect, for example, via a GPIO extension cable. Anyway, the final thing to mention is power, because normally if you've got a mini ITX form factor computer, it's gonna be powered via a standard ATX power supply that plugs into a standard 24 pin ATX power connector. And I did consider trying to make this work on this board, having a connector here and somehow wiring it up to work with the Pi, but in the end, I decided to opt for the more power efficient and the more straightforward solution, which is to use the Pi standard USB-C power supply, which will plug into the back of the board. Related with the Pi mounted in a case, we won't be able to push its power button back here. And whilst we could just plug in and disconnect the adapter as needed, a Pi 5 does have two unpopulated headers for a power switch. So I'm planning on using these in some manner, although I want to be careful about exactly what I solder to the board down here. I could use a bit of header strip like this, take a couple off and uh, solder them in, but I don't want to leave anything on the Pi which would stop it going back into a normal case when I've got bored of this project, I want to put the Pi back into a, a normal case. And so I need to pontificate on this and think about how exactly I'm going to rig the power switch. Guess what? I've built a 3D model. And I did it in Lightwave 3D simply because I've been using it for more years than I can remember. As we can see, we've got the holes for mounting the board in a PC case, as well as for mounting the Pi and WaveShare adapter, and I've made all the holes just slightly larger than required for the mounting screws, just to allow a little tolerance when things go together. Talking of which, I've also been very conservative with the back panel, including just a single cutout to accommodate all of the connectors with hopefully ample clearance. Finally, I've also added some extra geometry. And in part, this is because like Mr. Scott, I always worry about structural integrity. But also, I'm going to be printing this out on my Monoprice MP Select Mini V2, which is a compact 3D printer that cannot build the object in one piece. And so, I'll be splitting it into four sections for printing, and the cross struts will make it easier to glue the final parts together. And on Thingiverse, I'm sharing STL files for both the board as a single 3D printable object, as well as for the four cut-up sections. And with this noted, we'll let my 3D printer get on with its task. Right, whilst thermoplastic is extruding, I thought we'd take a look at this. The Raspberry Pi M.2 Plus hat and SSD kit, which I've now fitted as you can see. This cost me £36.90 with the pre-mounted 256GB SSD, although it can be purchased for £11.50 or $17.40 without a drive. And, as we can see, it can take either a 2242 or a 2230 m keyed MVME drive. Everything here is now put together with standoffs, which will allow it to be mounted on our 3D print. And note, I haven't used these standoffs. And these are the standoffs that came with the Raspberry Pi M.2 Pat Plus kit. And I haven't used these because they are absolute garbage. They are the worst standoffs I've ever come across. To be clear, two out of the four of these standoffs don't have threads that work in the end of them, or the screws don't work one or the other, that allow them to be used at all. And I tried, for example, to mount one of these on the corner of the, uh, the adapter, and the screw went halfway in and then stopped, and I had to bring in Stanley the knife to cut it off. And so, I don't know, may maybe I've just been unlucky. Maybe these are a bad batch, and normally the ones in included with the kit are great, but, I'm just very surprised to get such utter low quality components in an official Raspberry Pi kit, which is otherwise of a very good quality. Regardless, I needed some other mounting hardware anyway, and therefore throughout, I've used brass standoffs from a small kit. If I give you a front angle, we can see that the WaveShare adapter board mounts slightly higher than the Pi, 
and so whilst the Pi is sitting on 10mm standoffs, the ones under the adapter are 12mm. Here we can see exactly what will be used in the final build for each of the mounting points for the adapter and for the Pi and M.2 hat, and I'll list everything in the video description. Just before we move on, I want to note that I really like this setup of a Raspberry Pi 5 with the Waveshare adapter and the M.2 hat. And indeed, I often think that the most important outcomes of more outlandish projects, like this Raspberry Pi Mini ITX build, is that they make you aware of particular parts and setup combinations you might not have experimented with. And certainly, I would never have put this particular combination together were it not for this particular project, and yet I imagine now I've done it, I'll be going, oh yes, I can use that in all kinds of things in the future. And indeed, it's got me thinking, wouldn't it be great if we had a Raspberry Pi in this form factor, you know, with all the connectors on one edge and with space for an M.2 SSD? That would be a great future development in the world of Pi. Well, our 3D printing is almost complete, and so I just thought I'd give you a brief update on the power switch situation where, as you can see, we've now got two jumper wires coming out from under here. These will plug into the case power switch connector. And if I give you a close-up down here, you'll see I've used, pragmatically, a wire wrap solution, which should work perfectly well. And if I just uh, turn the thing over, show you underneath, you'll see there's a piece of tape holding things in place. Again, I'll give you a closer shot. There we are. And yes, I'll be very careful things aren't shorting out. I might even add a glob of temporary hot melt adhesive just to make sure everything stays in place. But regardless, the solution here is easy to remove. And so with that fully explained, let's move on to our 3D prints. Guess what? Final parts. We've got our four 3D prints and they've come out pretty well. I think all the holes and things are in the right places. They're not perfect prints, I have to admit. I've changed the filament I'm using. I'm now using 3D Fuels Pro PLA Plus, which is supposed to be very good. It doesn't seem to get on very well with my printer, despite many different tests. But uh, these parts are OK. They will serve our purpose. But of course, they need to be fastened together. So let's use the magic of filmmaking to achieve that. There we go. And thanks to the assistance of Mr. Superglue, we now have a single solid piece. And it's worth pointing out, I made a design choice here to have the end panel here, the I.O. panel, go across the whole length of the Mini ITX board. And that's not quite right because an I.O. panel should end here. And you'll see that when we put this into a case. But this is going to work because I've kept the I.O. shield or the, the thing I've built on the back of the board to represent it within the form factor of Mini ITX, 170 by 170 millimeters, rather than having it point out further than that and so this will fit in the case, as you will see in a second. Anyway, that point noted, let's bring in the Pi, which should in theory fit in something like this. So let's secure it in. There we are. All the holes were in the right place, which is a great relief. And so we've now got our Mini ITX Raspberry Pi all ready to fit in a case. And guess what? Over here, we have got a Mini ITX case. So let's bring in the Pi and put it inside. This goes under there and drops in and comes forward like that. So let's put in the screws. There we go. And if we have a shot of the end, we can see what I was referring to earlier about how the end panel here goes beyond the end of the cutout, but it's fine because it's set back. I'm now thinking I should have made an additional panel to actually bolt sticking out and, and sitting into this particular area, the IO shield area. I still could. Anyway, we mustn't forget to connect up the power switch. We've got the jumper leads here. I'll go to this header and this system. And I know it's the two pins just next to the, the blanked off pin, which go in there and there like that. And if we now connect everything up, so many wires here not needed for this system with the Pi. And I think it's now time for a test, so I'll turn on the power. There we go, and the Pi should boot straight away when the power is applied. It won't use the power button initially. What I want to do is to boot the Pi up and then close it down and then check we can boot it again with the power button. Is the Pi booting? Hopefully it is. And uh, 
little bit of noise from its fan there. Hopefully it's coming up. I did image Raspberry Pi OS to the SSD last night before we were making us ready for this. And yes, it's all working fine. And uh, let's just therefore go straight across to log out and shut down like that, which will shut it down. You may just about be able to see the LEDs flicking on the Pi when we do this stuff. And now in theory, we can boot it up using the switch on the case. Let's have a go. That looked good. We saw the little LED there. We'll see the green one in a second. You may just about see that flickering. Well, the Pi is booting up again, I hope. Come on, Pi, you can do it. Yes, yeah, a little bit of noise from its fan. Normal boot up cycle for a Raspberry Pi running Raspberry Pi OS. And there we are, back in Raspberry Pi OS. And let's just test out the speed of the NVMe SSD. Let's do an LSBRK to see the block device on the system. There is our NVMe SSD. And we just bring up the command to test the speed of the drive. There it is in the buffer. Let's uh, execute that. Let's see what we get. Should be reasonable. High 100 megabytes per second, something like that. 811 megabytes per second. So that's absolutely fine. So I think we'll call that a successful test. We'll close the Pi down again like that and uh, like that. And so I think the final thing to do, other than turning off the power just to be safe, is to put on the top cover. So uh, I'll take the cover and do that. And there we go. We have built a mini ITX Raspberry Pi computer. On several occasions, the Raspberry Pi 5 and indeed the Raspberry Pi 4 have been marketed as a potential replacement for a desktop PC. And with a project like this, a Pi can even look like a desktop PC. We can have a Raspberry Pi system that looks like this, or this, or this, or this. And quite why we might want to do this, we can debate, but it's always good to have options. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh.